Portenta Pro Community Solutions, Classes and Objects. Yeah, this is Arduino. So let's uh, cancel. There we go. So examples, Portenta Pro Community Solutions down to the coding and classes and objects. Uh, once again, let's just run this. Let's check. We're using the chow and it's on the correct port. So we can open up the serial monitor and it's cleared. And there's the drag and drop box. And let's see what's going on. There we go. Loading the class. Value of my A is 2. Value of my B is 0. Loading the class. My A is 3. My B is 1. Uh, my A is 4. My B is 0. I'm thinking my B is probably a Boolean because it's going back and forth from 0 to 1. 0 is typically false. 1 is true. I could have done an if statement had it printed out true or false. It looks like uh, my A is just counting. Almost all these ver uh, videos have had a counting of some sort. Uh, so let's have a look at this. Uh, typically, classes are dumped in .h files that are then included in your program. I'm uh, just trying to make things as easy as possible. So here we're defining the class. So it's got the keyword class. Notice it's in blue, meaning the Arduino IDE kind of knows what it is, and I'm giving it a name. I always put my in front of variable names so that you don't have to Google it. You could Google Arduino class and find information about it, or Google Arduino public and find information about it. So public with a colon, these are all public variables, but check it out. Here is a function. That's why we did functions just before this. So a function is lumped inside this class. A class looks actually quite similar to a struct. Um, so we now have a name. We have some public variables. You probably could have private variables, which means they work in your code, but no one using the include from your uh, library could use them. Yeah, I make all my stuff public, whatever. Um, Okay, so we have an integer my a and a boolean my b and a function that doesn't return anything, but it reports. It says the value of my a is string my a, value of b, string my b. So let's go use this. Now, I'm not sure if Arduino uh, does the same. Well, class is class of definition, but the actual object is the instance of the definition. It makes sense. In JavaScript, objects are kind of different than classes and you instantiate a class, but whatever. So here I have a new function, which also is voiding, uh, meaning it's not returning anything. And we're passing to the function the myTest class, there it is, and a pointer to the object variable, OK? And then uh, here, uh, this is one way of writing these things, brackets, star, just like that. It kind of makes sense. I actually, I think I like that way better. But this is probably more standard. So now my object is in here, the pointer to the class. My A is being dereferenced, and we're adding one to it. Here's my object, my B is not what it used to be, OK? And then my object, we're running the my report. So there's a my report. It's going to print out those values. Um, here we're setting up the class, my test class, just like integer, boolean, uh, float, is we're creating a my test class object, OK? Here's our setup. We're just activating the serial monitor. Here we're printing loading the class. Here we're running the my class function with a dereferenced my class test class object. See, it gets a little confusing. I actually don't do a lot of programming of classes. I use other people's classes, but I do think it's good for us to see some of this. And it's waiting 3,000. So these are pointers. And this is dereferencing the pointer. This is actually grabbing the pointer as a pointer. And this is dereferencing the pointer um, and counting. And this is making your true false or your false true with the not statement there. Uh, I've done it. 
I've done objects and glasses. I'm um, not sure how great an example this is, but it gives you a sense of uh, how things are done in libraries without actually having to use a library. Have a good day. <laughs>